Okay, so Apple had a nice short little 30 minute event today announcing just a bunch of new iPad stuff. Now this was the longest they've ever gone without updating anything iPad related, so they had some cooking to do. But the thing is, and I feel like we've been saying this for years, it kind of doesn't matter how powerful they make the iPad. It's still an iPad, right? It's still iPad OS, and we, we've seen gigantic improvements in the M series chips, and these iPads are like the most powerful chips ever on paper, but they're still iPads. So the last thing we need after all this time is just another spec bumped iPad, right? Well, let me introduce you to the newest iPads. So first up, there's a new iPad Air, which follows the script of bringing a few things down from the previous iPad Pros, and of course, you know, making it available for this lower price. So it graduates from the M1 to the M2 chip inside. It starts up at 128 gigs of storage now, and it moves the webcam to the landscape bezel where it belongs. It gets faster Wi-Fi, and for the first time, there is a larger one now. So they're calling it the 11 inch and the 13 inch iPad Air. I had to clarify it just because the last one was 10.9 inches. So are they just simplifying the name? Like, is it actually bigger? And turns out, yeah, there is just a little bit more screen here. Great. But other than that, it's pretty predictable. It's a spec bump. Like this is sticking to the script here. I think I could hand you the newest iPad right now. And you couldn't really tell the new Air from the old Air just looking at it other than if you're holding the bigger one or if you recognize the super exciting new colors. I mean, hopefully, you can hear my sarcasm through the screen, but there's blue, purple, starlight, and space gray. So it's $599 for the small one and $799 for the bigger one. But then we also got a more significant update to the iPad Pros. This is where they push the limits of the iPad. This is where they want to show their absolute best stuff, the best possible tablets. And man, if we just ignore the software for a second, these new iPads are ridiculous. So first of all, they start off by revealing that these new iPads, the 11 inch and the 13 inch, are the new thinnest Apple devices ever made, ever. That's that's including phones, that's including like old iPods and everything. The 11 inch is 5.3 millimeters thin and the 13 inch is 5.1 millimeters thin. So that's literally thinner than the iPod Nano ever was. It's nuts, it just, it looks ridiculous. It's crazy to hold. It's also lighter, as you might imagine. It just kind of feels like this impossible sheet of metal in your hand. I don't know if anyone ever looked at an iPad Pro and asked for it to be thinner, but that's what they went and did. What could, uh, what, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Fun fact, this also now means that the iPad Air is heavier than the iPad Pro, just to make sure we keep a mess of an iPad lineup going. <laughs> but the new Pro also gets a new chip, and a new screen. So Apple took this event to introduce us to the next generation of Apple Silicon with the M4 chip. And this iPad is the only thing that it's in right now. It's just the iPad with M4. So that gives it, stop me if it sounds familiar, even more ridiculous amounts of power in such a tiny physical and thermal envelope, especially since we came from M2. So it's a more power efficient three nanometer chip. The CPU core is net out to like 50% faster than M2. The GPU is up to four times faster. And they're saying that they can do the same performance output as M2 with half the power, so it's super efficient. There's an improved neural engine. There's better cooling. Now again, I don't know who was asking for a thinner iPad, but there's kind of no denying that it's at least just physically impressive to look at. And this is the type of thing, this is the form factor that is specifically enabled by the M4 chip. Apple is quoting basically the same battery life as the last iPad Pro. And I kind of, I have to assume that there's significantly less physical battery in the thing because it's so much thinner. So that just basically means Apple's going, hey, we think that that was enough battery life in the last gen, so we're just gonna match that. And that means we can go way thinner with less battery because the new chip is more efficient. So then the new display, this is another thing that is actually kind of enabled also by the M4 chip. Sometimes it seems like they're just saying that, but this is also true. So. These are OLED iPads now. Both sizes, it's the exact same set of features across both iPads, which kind of makes the $300 price difference between them a little bit tougher. But yeah, OLEDs on both the new iPad Pros. And OLED is awesome, right? We already knew this. It's We've had OLED phones forever. The pitch black blacks, the individually lit pixels, the super awesome vibrance, like all of the OLED stuff is great. And we were excited to finally see it in a relatively gigantic display that is an iPad. But making a huge OLED that's also incredibly bright 
was a challenge that required just a little bit of extra engineering, a little extra ingenuity. So they put together something that they're calling a tandem OLED display, which honestly, to me, I think this is maybe the most interesting part of the whole tablet event today. So you can basically think of it as two different OLED displays stacked on top of each other. And then the new display driver on M4 can address both layers simultaneously. So that's what's allowing them to get really high local brightness. And that's the spec now. That's a thousand nits of peak full screen brightness and 1600 nits of peak HDR brightness on an OLED on an iPad size screen. And in person, it, it looks, well, it looks like a really bright OLED. It looks super colorful, really bright, inky blacks. You know, in this hands-on area that I got to spend like 30 minutes in, it's not gonna look its best and there's crazy lighting everywhere, but I will be getting my hands on it to review and I, I intend to dive in and find out if there are any downsides, but it looks pretty great here. And then also, weirdly, they announced a nano texture matte version of the iPad Pro. So you know how there's a, a matte Pro Display XDR? I would, be, I would be very careful about ordering this particular option based on what I've seen. Like I can see here that it is definitely better at dealing with reflections than a normal display. That's awesome. But just like the desktop version, that is at the expense of a little bit of sharpness and contrast. You know, the blacks don't look nearly as black to me, even at zero degrees off axis. And I also have to wonder about durability because the Pro Display XDR is very picky about which microfiber cloth you use. And you can literally ruin it if you use the wrong one. And with this iPad, you know, I can feel the difference between the soft touch texture of the nano texture and the glossy bezels. And I just have a feeling that you're only gonna be able to use or rely on the microfiber that comes in the box with this thing. And not only does it cost an extra $100 to get the nano texture, it's also only available on the one terabyte and two terabyte highest end models. So I think they know that like people shouldn't just walk in the store and just get it because it's on the base one. So yeah, just be careful with that one. But you know what probably made the most headlines out of all the stuff announced today is the spec bumped Apple Pencil. <laughs> There's now a new, Apple Pencil Pro. And it looks exactly the same as the previous Apple Pencil, but with this new text on the back that says Pencil Pro on it now. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's still not the eraser. Uh, but yeah, this new Apple Pencil Pro has a haptic motor inside, so it supports Find My now. There's also a new squeeze sensor in the barrel for activating tools in different apps that will support it. And a new gyroscope actually makes it rotation sensitive. And I was trying this, it's surprisingly precise, like really, really good. So if you're an artist, not like me, you know, maybe you're doing a barrel roll with certain drawing apps or calligraphy applications for the $129 that it costs to get one of these things. But another incredibly inconvenient note, this new Pro Pencil is only compatible with the newest recently announced iPad Pro or iPad Air. Because when they moved that webcam to the long side, that's also where a lot of the magnets for lining up and charging the pencil were. So I had to redesign the magnets up there and that's now a different array. So it's only compatible with the newest iPads. Why didn't they just move it to the other side for charging? I don't know. Maybe that makes too much sense. And then there's also a new Magic Keyboard as well, still ungodly expensive, but if you get the new one, it's also, it's lighter than the previous gen, the trackpad is bigger and there's a whole function row at the top now, which actually that's, that is super useful and the pass-through charging is even faster. Apparently it's 60 watts through the pins in the back. But all that being said, at the end of the day, guess what? We just got another set of spec bumped iPads. They are metal rectangles with incredible power and efficiency in our hands that are just still iPads. And I don't know how many more times I can say this, but like taking advantage of all of this power is nearly impossible. There are a tiny sliver of apps that actually make it feel like worth upgrading. There's almost nothing these iPads can do that my M1 iPad Pro can't do. And this isn't even to downplay the hardware because the hardware is actually amazing. That's, that's where the difference comes from. Like it's got this super bright high resolution OLED displays with pitch black blacks, this M4 chip with ridiculous power and efficiency, new CPU, new GPU, better neural engine. Like I've never wanted an iPad to be thinner, but that line about them wanting the iPad to feel like a magic sheet of glass really resonated with this model in particular, even if you do feel like you could snap it in half the whole time. It's just the awkwardness of this one mainly comes from timing, because I think we all know, well, it's already been announced, WWDC, their worldwide developer conference, 
is right around the corner, and we all know and expect them to update all the software across all their stuff, a new iOS, a new iPad OS, so I guess iPad OS 18, and whatever Apple is gonna decide to do with that is around the corner. So we've got these new iPads shipping next week, but all the new software, that could be awesome, well, that's this summer. And this feels like it could be one of the biggest updates yet to these iPads. You know, it's, it's Apple showing their hand at how many more AI features they wanna build in and how many more features people wanna add that lets this be their primary computer. Maybe more Siri improvements, all of this stuff. So in this awkward meantime, here we have these really, really impressive spec bumped iPad Pros, the most powerful iPads of all time, the thinnest Apple devices literally ever made, but the list of things it can do is the same as my three year old M1. Just saying, what a time to be alive. Speaking of announcements though, Ridge and I have finally launched our first product together. So it starts with the Ridge wallet, you know, the minimal high quality industrial wallet, the more modern way to carry cash and cards. Well, you might know I joined Ridge as the chief creative partner earlier this year, and we're finally releasing our first MKBHD gear together. So one of the first things we wanted to do is just make MKBHD versions of some of the existing stuff. It felt too obvious, so that's exactly what we're doing. So I love carbon fiber and matte black, I don't know if you knew that about me already, but those are my base inspirations for these two wallets. So the MKBHD Carbon Fiber 3K, this is just a bunch of lightweight, ultra durable carbon fiber with the logo. And then the Matte Black Everything wallet, this is just aluminum, but it's got this black oil filled engravement print, which is so sick. And then these wallets also come with a debossed MKBHD money clip, or uh, you can do a cash strap. You can also attach these or detach them. You could also do an attachment for an air tag, so just to make sure you don't lose it. Or you can do a, like a find my card, which I've done as well. But yeah, I just, I carry this in my wallet all the time and I definitely won't lose it. And then of course, if you don't like my designs, that's fine. Ridge has like 50 plus other designs in their catalog. They've got NFL licensed team stuff if you wanna rock your team. The store is endless. And if you even think it could be time to upgrade, it's a great time to just try because if you don't love it after 99 days, you can literally send it right back, no questions asked, pretty sick. And I'll let you in on a little secret. It's 30% off the new gear right now, but also any style if you order a wallet and a key holder at the same time. So just the two together, boom, 30% off. And also 10% off whatever you want at ridge.com slash mkbhd. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to be launching this stuff and also a bunch more coming up later this year. I won't say too much about it, but you can sign up at the same link if you wanna get product updates. I've told them just to only email you about that if you sign up. But yeah, let me know what you think of these new iPads in general. I mean, it's kind of an awkward waiting period until we get all the new iOS 18 stuff, but let me know what you think. New thin, thinner than ever iPads. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.